Multiple people on Twitter recently asked me my opinion of the documentary Living Proof, directed by Matt Embry, which is a critique of the medical establishment with regard to the treatment of multiple sclerosis, criticizing the pharmaceutical companies, neurologists, even MS organization, and arguing that lifestyle management is the appropriate treatment of MS. I did, in fact, watch the documentary, and I'll give you my review today. So let's have some fun. I'm Brandon Bieber, and if you're new to this channel, I post videos about MS every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Now, I should start with a conflict of interest statement. So this is a documentary criticizing the medical establishment, and I am a neurologist who treats MS, so I am sort of part of that medical establishment, and my natural reaction may well be to be defensive and to oppose the documentary. However, I don't have any direct conflict of interest in the sense that I don't take money from drug companies and I work for a health management organization. And so potentially if I didn't prescribe medication and only recommended diet, I would actually save my organization tens of millions of dollars and I wouldn't have any effect on my salary either way. So I'll try to my best to be as objective as possible. Now, if you don't know about Matt Embry, who's the director and the star of this documentary, he himself was diagnosed with MS at age 19. And his father, Ashton Embry, is actually a geologist, uh, but he did a lot of research on MS and designed what he thought was an evidence-based diet to treat his own son. And he got his son to stop taking injectable medications and to only use the diet. And now over 20 years later, I believe Matt Embry is in, in his early 40s, he's done very well and he's very successful. He happens to be an actor and he's a good looking, tall, formidable guy and he's married and has children and he looks great. And so he's a perfect ambassador for this diet, which they now call the MS Hope Diet. Now the MS Hope Diet is sort of like a paleo diet. It's gluten and wheat free, dairy free. It, you avoid processed food. And it's also somewhat low in saturated fat based on the original research of Dr. Roy Swank. And it's, he also recommends certain supplements such as vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, calcium, and magnesium. So to run through the documentary, they interview various different people. And they start with George Ebers, who is a neurologist who's now retired, who is well known for criticizing the MS establishment and criticizing multiple sclerosis trials. And he argues that although disease modifying therapies are effective in the short run in terms of decreasing the risk of relapses, there's really no good evidence that they have benefit over the long run. And he feels that the trial should be longer, measuring outcomes like time until you need a cane or time until you develop secondary progressive MS, because he believes those would be more meaningful outcomes. And he argues that there's really no incentive for the pharmaceutical companies to do these trials. They just want to get their drug approved. And once they get it approved, they market it as aggressively as possible and charge exorbitant prices. So he's kind of one of the stars of the show. Uh, they st he, there's one section where he starts reading off the side effects of the medication. And I thought it was kind of funny because he's reading off the side effects of glutirimer and interferons. And, you know, there are far worse medications than that. You could read off the side effects of alimtuzumab or cytoxan or, you know, novantron, even though it's not used in MS anymore if you really wanted to. Uh, so I thought that was a little bit silly. They talk about uh, CCSVI, which is chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency, the theory that abnormal constriction of the veins and increased pressure within the brain is actually the cause of multiple sclerosis. And Matt himself says that he underwent the liberation treatment to treat this problem. They also interview Jeff Beal, who's actually a well-known composer who has multiple sclerosis and apparently did very well with this liberation treatment. And his wife, Joan Beal, who does a lot of social media work promoting CCSVI. And the charity that Matt Embry and his father ran, which is Direct MS, actually funded a small trial in Buffalo. Uh, the lead investigator was Dr. Zavadinov, who I actually met in person at conferences. It was actually a negative trial, though, although it was a very small trial. At one point in the documentary, they interviewed Judy Graham, who was one of the early proponents of nutrition in MS. She actually commented to one of my threads on Twitter, so I thought it was a very small world because I was thinking about her recently. And she wrote the book Healing MS Naturally. And she's interviewing her, and she's done very well. She's had MS for a long time. 
although she admits that she does have some progression later in life and actually needs to use a scooter or wheelchair for longer distances. And Matt is very tearful in response to this, although she says that she hasn't really followed her own diet too strictly and she's been a little bit remiss and maybe that's the reason that she's progressed. Um, there's a scene where they interview David Lyons, who is a bodybuilder with MS, who also wrote a book. And David Lyons admits that he's had some progression of his MS. And there's a great scene where Matt sort of raids his pantry and sees a bunch of protein powders. And some of them actually contain casein protein, which, of course, is against the MS Hope diet. And so he warns uh, David Lyons, you need to stop consuming this because it's making you worse. Um, they actually interview a woman who's very disabled with MS and is getting an adipose-based stem cell treatment in Southern California by a neurosurgeon, although uh, she doesn't look to have improved significantly after the treatment. They also interview Dr. Michael Dake, who is one of the proponents of the liberation treatment for CCSVI at Stanford. And he says that he basically cannot progress with his research because the establishment is sort of against him. And they actually have an interview with Terry Walls, Dr. Terry Walls, who's a proponent of a different type of paleo diet to treat MS and wrote the very famous book, The Walls Protocol, and also Minding My Mitochondria. And it shows her gardening and talking about how she reversed her multiple sclerosis. So that's a great scene. So uh, what I like about the video is I really like how they talk about conflict of interests and incentives and how that really manipulates organizations to act and that it's really hard for people to be without bias. And I think this is definitely true, although they don't really bring up some of the criticisms I would have of the medical system. One criticism I have is when you go to a medical conference, a lot of people have interactions with drug companies and take money from drug companies. And I think that biases a lot of the presentations and makes them more favorable for the drugs. That's just my personal opinion. They don't really talk about that in the video, but that's just one of the aspects of conflict of interest. I really like how they talk about the importance of lifestyle in MS. I think this is a very underrecognized subject. And I think that they really understand the idea that there really is no way to get funding for this. No one is going to make money on broccoli. No one is going to fund a multi-million dollar trial to do a long-term randomized trial on a certain diet. However, I wish they would have shown more on what their diet is and giving specifics about their recommendations and giving evidence or at least a theoretical basis for their recommendations. Now, I want to make a few critiques of the documentary. One thing is that they provide this sense that all of the lifestyle people are together against the establishment. That's not really true. What Dr. Terry Walls recommends and what the MS Hope Diet recommend, rec recommends, sure, there are a few similarities, like they both advise avoiding dairy and avoiding gluten. But there are a lot of differences. For instance, Terry Walls does not recommend a low saturated fat diet. Her diet with organ meats and coconut oil is actually quite high in saturated fat. Also, her recommendations to achieve nutritional ketosis are not really part of the MS Hope diet at all. And other you know, nutrition advocates, such as George Jelinek, have very different recommendations actually advocating for whole grain consumption. And so you know, I don't really think that there's this sort of lifestyle approach versus drugs. Different people have different lifestyle recommendations. So he has this critique of the Canadian MS Society that he wants them to sort of support his diet. But the thing is that these organizations are very conservative and they really only want to support a proven program. And frankly, he does not have evidence that's sufficient to their standards. If they were going to support a diet, which diet should they support? Arguably, George Jelinek has better evidence. He has the holism study. What about Terry Walsh? She's done a randomized trial. What about George McDou uh, John McDougall? He's done a randomized trial. So I think that he's sort of last on the list. He shouldn't just expect an organization to start promoting his diet. He really has to bring the evidence. Another thing is that I really disagree with the statement made by George Evers that there's no evidence for long-term benefit of the disease-modifying therapies. Now, if you want a randomized trial where one group is getting placebo for 10 years and another group is getting the drug for 10 years, that's true. That does not exist. 
uh, you know, it would be impossible to actually fund this trial. It would be impossible to retain patients in a randomized, randomized blinded group for 10 years. It would be potentially unethical as you're discovering that the treatment is more effective than placebo. You can't really continue to randomize people to placebo. And also, there's really no incentive for them to do this because they have a limited patent life of their drug and they're going to run out of patent life before they even bring the drug to market. So it's just not practical. Now, if you look at cross-sectional data, even correcting for baseline characteristics and confounders, there does seem to be a benefit to disease-modifying therapy. And if you look at long-term follow-up of randomized trials, such as the Strata data set from the pivotal Tysabri trials, you can see that the treatment group is better than the placebo group even 10 years later. And I'll post a few links uh, to the articles in the comments below. So that is a critique I have of George Ebers. I don't think that that is strictly correct. And honestly, if you're that skeptical, you should also be skeptical of the diet and you should also be skeptical of CCSBI. If anything, there's much less evidence for the diet and much less evidence for liberation treatment. There are negative randomized trials for liberation treatment, no even short-term successful randomized trials. Uh, so I do think it's a really good, uh, well done documentary. I do think they bring up a lot of important issues, although I do think it's somewhat biased and has various drawbacks, as I described. Uh, so if you watch the documentary, please post in the comments below and let me know about your thoughts.